Good morning. On today's news broadcast, Animal X-rays, a new White House Council member, and the first dog. Plus local sports, weather, and more. APSU TV News starts right now. I'm Angela Peterson and I'm Gabe Jones a Fort Campbell soldier was shot and killed Sergeant Brittany Silvers fell victim to a gunshot this past Sunday the main suspect is her estranged husband Victor Silvers who has a pending domestic assault case against him from July of this year his case was set for November 13th however the suspect is currently in custody the Fort Campbell base's gates were closed for about an hour Sunday night as police investigated. As of right now, Victor Silvers is being tried for domestic assault and the murder of his wife. We will update you as details of this local tragedy unfold. News broke Wednesday night that Don McGahn headed for the exit. Right now, President Trump's lead White House attorney handling the Russia investigation, Emmett Flood, will find that role, will fill that role. While the administration waits for the president's new pick, Washington lawyer Pat Cipollone to start, CNN's Jessica Dean has more. New White House counsel Pat Cipollone will have his hands full, stepping into his job as the White House braces for potential legal storms following November's midterms. The Washington, D.C.-based lawyer is also a former Justice Department official during President George H.W. Bush's administration. When he was first being considered in August, President Trump's personal attorney, Jay Sekulow, put out a statement praising Cipollone's ability. Quote, Pat Cipollone is a brilliant attorney. I have had the privilege to work with him and can attest to his skill, integrity, and knowledge of the law. Cipollone's hiring shows the White House is gearing up in the event Democrats take the House, which could lead to a number of new investigations of the Trump administration and perhaps even an impeachment battle. I think the president has to feel some degree of confidence that you can utilize those legal abilities in what is a political environment, that you bring to the job some sense of um, political sensitivity. He's going to have a lot on his plate um, at one time. As the head lawyer for the office of the presidency, the White House counsel advises the president and his staff on legal issues surrounding everything from policy to any investigations or subpoenas. To make a public announcement. A tough position once dramatized yeah. on the West Wing. Then order the attorney general to appoint a special prosecutor, not just any special prosecutor, the most blood spitting, Bartlett hating Republican in the bar. He's going to have an unlimited budget and a staff like an army. The new slogan around here is going to be bring it on. Like that TV version, that may be Cipollone's slogan as he's tasked with protecting President Trump from any legal reactions or inclinations that could be damaging. And I don't envy him. I work for a president who listened, who took advice, who respected advice, and who, unless it was patently off base, followed that advice. You can't count on that with President Trump. That's pretty clear. Um, so I, that's going to be a challenge for him. AP Day is an event on campus for potential college students to visit and learn about the programs, clubs, and departments offered on campus. Most current students visit APSU before attending, and I had the chance to go out and see the importance of this program. One of the great things about Austin P is we're such a small campus and we really get to know our students. As a faculty member, I feel like I can connect with my students, especially when the classrooms are as small as 20 and, and you get to really feel that connection. I feel like I can really mentor them. And I think that's one of the special unique things about Austin P and specifically about the Department of Communication that we really get to have a personal connection with our students and help mentor them through this whole experience that the university brings. So Austin P is really like, it's really big, which is something that I really want to do. And it's like, it has a lot of opportunities for me, such as this right now. And like studying abroad, music and all that other stuff. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And I really hope I get accepted. <laughs> I'm a senior here at Austin P and I have been provided the opportunity to get involved in so many ways in my department. And I would not, 
I don't think I would have a, as good as a resume if it wasn't for the faculty here trying to help me get more involved, the student organizations here that help me get involved. There's so much encouragement to get involved, and I definitely think it's a school worth pursuing. Hundreds of thousands of Tennessee residents now have the opportunity to get their driver's license reinstated after a landmark ruling on Tuesday by U.S. District Judge Aletta Trigger. Adam Tamborin of the Leaf Chronicle reports, quote, the new order comes in a September 2017 class action suit challenging a state law that allowed officials to revoke someone's license if they didn't pay a fine for a traffic violation, end quote. Her order also makes way for thousands to get their licenses back if they cannot pay outstanding traffic fines. The argument was that if citizens could not already pay their fines, it furthers their strife now that they could not get to work to make money to pay their fines. The ruling could have national implications as well. The, department, the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security said it would stop revoking licenses, quote, as the court requires, end quote. To get your license back, you can visit a reinstatement center or call 866-903-7357 to speak with a representative or visit their website at dl.safety.tn.gov. NPHC has their annual step show coming up for October 27th for homecoming. APSU Sydney Hawkins went out to get more information on the upcoming performance. Step into homecoming. Saturday the 27th, the National Panhellenic Council will be hosting their annual homecoming step show at 7.30 p.m. in the Foy Fitness and Recreational Center. A first place prize of $1,250 and a second place prize of $500 will be given to the top two Greek organizations that perform the best shows. This event will be hosted by Mr. Bankshot. Director of Programming LaMarcus Day was able to give us an inside look about this upcoming event. Tickets will be $15 in advance for students in military. Tickets will be $20 in advance for non-students or non-military. And tickets will be $30 at the door. Our show is open to everyone in the local area and from everywhere else. You can find your tickets in the Fraternity and Sorority Affairs Office located in the Morgan University Center. From October 22nd to October 26th, your NPHC organizations will be tabling selling tickets as well. It has been a week since Hurricane Michael hit the Gulf Coast and the death toll has increased. Hurricane Michael was a fierce Category 4 hurricane and killed 33 people so far. The death toll is expected to rise as rescuers are still finding bodies. The authorities are worried that some people could be buried beneath the rubble. The Florida Department of Health has issued an online form for residents to report lost loved ones. Residents have returned to their homes only to find that their homes are gone. Many homeowners are trying to pick up the pieces and trying to figure out what to do next. For more on local weather, let's head over to Brandon Crossland. Brandon? Thank you, Angela. It's been a while since I've been on this side of the table. It's good to be back. Uh, looking at our current national temperatures, 49 degrees in Seattle. 70 degrees in Los Angeles, 50 in Denver, 58 in Dallas, in Chicago, 48, Atlanta, 55, and in New York, 56. Looking at the state of Tennessee right now, today's highs Clarks, right here in Clarksville is 70 degrees, Nashville, 73, Memphis, 70, and Chattanooga, we're looking at 74, and with Knoxville, a temperature of 72. Now for today's lows, right here in Clarksville, 51, Nashville, 54, and Memphis, 56, Chattanooga, 58, and Knoxville, 55. As we step outside right now, it is 49 degrees with a two mile per hour wind. And tonight's temperature, we have 56 degrees, definitely looking for some rain, that's 77% chance. Five, five mile per hour winds, definitely pack those, that, that rain gear heading into tonight. And now your five day forecast for today, we'll have the showers uh, 70, the high low 51 and uh, going into your weekend, some partly cloudy skies. Sunday we will finally have a full sun with a high of 55, low of 35 and Monday partly cloudy 62, low 39 and Tuesday mostly sunny, a high of 66 and a low of 40. That's all for the weather today. Still ahead, Bryce Beamett tells us what's happening in the world of sports. APSU TV News will be right back.
How will you lead to a better future? Will you lead through life-changing innovations? Or will your leadership shine through the quality of your work? Success is defined by the individual. So it's time to think about the person you want to be and where you will learn to lead through excellence. It's time to become a governor at Austin P. Then NBA season is underway as the Indiana Pacers host the Memphis Grizzlies on Wednesday night. Pacers player Bohan Bogdanovich led the team with 19 points for an overall final score of 111 to 83 with the Indiana Pacers taking the win. Other winning teams from the opening night were the Denver Nuggets over the LA Clippers and the New York Knicks over the Atlanta Hawks. For more information on what's happening in sports, let's head over to Bryce Beamett for a look at your Gov Sports update. Thanks, Angela. Austin Peay Sports had a busy weekend this weekend. Let's start with football. The Austin Peay football team is coming off a 27-31 loss against Southeast Missouri last Saturday. The Govs had an outstanding afternoon on the ground, but ran out of time. In a very back and forth game, the Govs are leading 27 to 30, 24. And in the last 15 seconds, Simo's Marquise Terry was able to score, getting the win against Simo. Govs quarterback Jeremiah Oatesville finished five of 24 passes for the 229 yards and a pair of scores. The Govs will have a bye weekend this weekend and will be back Saturday, October 27th for the APSU homecoming game against Tennessee Tech at Forterra Stadium at 4 p.m. Austin Peay Volleyball played against Belmont and Tennessee State this past weekend. The Govs lost to Belmont on Friday 2-3, but turned around and beat Tennessee State 3-1 on Saturday. The Govs kept their winning momentum to their, on their game Tuesday, beating Western Kentucky for the first time since 1997. Senior Cecily Gable continued to be a strong force for the Govs offense, leading APSU with 13 kills. Jenny Garrick had five aces along with four dig, four, 14 digs. The Govs will be home their next four games, playing Jacksonville State tonight at 6 p.m. And at the Dunn Center and turning around to play again tomorrow against Tennessee Tech at 2 p.m. Now, the Austin Peay soccer team had two painful losses this past weekend. The Govs played Murray State at home, losing in a close 2-1 game. Murray was up 2-0 going into the second half when senior Caroline Wistrom was able to score, making it 2-1. The Govs fell short, not able to get another one. The Govs then traveled to UT Martin for a Sunday game, losing 5-0. Coach Colavara mentioned how hard it was for the team to bounce back after conceding three goals in the first five minutes. The Govs are now sitting in seventh place in the OVC standings and will be playing SEMO this Sunday at 2 p.m. in Cape Girardeau. In local sports news, the Nashville Predators are coming off a three-game winning streak after their latest win over the Minnesota Wild 4-2. The Preds will play the Cal Calgary Flames tomorrow at 8 p.m. For local football fans, the Tennessee Titans are coming off a tough loss to the Baltimore Ravens 21-0 last Sunday. The Titans will play away at Wembley Stadium against Los Angeles Chargers this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The Titans are currently 3-3 three three in the standings. Meanwhile, the Chargers are currently 4-2. That's all we have for sports. APSU TV News will be right back. The honors program at Austin P started. There was a group of professors who thought, what are we doing for our strongest students? And since then, the program has changed and grown with the university. And now we have over 300 students who are in the program. It's open to students of all majors. I wanted something that would set me apart from other pre-med students. So I thought the honor program would help me with that. It's pretty easy to make friends here because you know everyone here is focused on school because they're in the honors program, so they want to get something out of school. And it's just a nice place to come to study. In the classrooms, they will be asked to stand on their tiptoes, is what we say. But the classes are more interesting. They move along a little faster. It's a place where those students can congregate to study, so I think students are better prepared for careers and for life in general through that academic curriculum. Welcome back. With investments piling up and big companies wanting a piece of the pie, autonomous cars seem ready to conquer the transport industry in the years to come. They're even hitting the road in Paris. CNN's Melissa Bell found out why the technology is here to stay. Autonomous driving, we're told, is the way of the future. Autonomous cars featured heavily at this year's Paris Motor Show. But how can a computer deal with the randomness, the chaos of Parisian traffic? We decided to put that to the test. Our co-pilots today are engineers <laughs> developing the technology that's already being sold to car makers. 
And where better to start than at the foot of the Eiffel Tower? So now the car is driving itself? Yes. You're not involved at all? No. No pedal, no wheel, no, no nothing? No, no. I got my hands on my knees. Which should be a dangerous thing given the cyclists, scooters and pedestrians. Not to mention the bad drivers who do have their hands on the wheel. But Benoit says the car sensors are more efficient than the human brain. And as you can see, there is a pedestrian here, and we're going to slow because it's detected. And then when the pedestrian is off the, the crossing uh, area... And even if the then... pedestrian had come much faster, the car would have yes, done that. It's, yes. it's, it's programmed to stop. Yes. The technology is part programmed, part learnt. Through its many cameras, sensors, computers and radars, the car's artificial intelligence allows it to learn as it goes. It's just always focused on its own task, which is driving me safely from point A to point B. So if that car did something very rude, yeah. it just cut across you yeah. and the car felt it. Yes. And it didn't even complain. No. There was no tooting of the horn. No. <laughs> there will always be an element of risk, right there? Even, even for computers? The zero fault doesn't exist. What we want to show is that we're able to drive during one billion hours without any problem. And that's much better than human beings. Yeah, of course. Perhaps the most surprising thing about all this is that this is likely to be an evolution rather than a revolution. Already, all of the sensors that exist on this car and that allow it to drive autonomously exist on the sorts of cars that you would buy today, ordinary cars. And so what's likely to happen is that little by little, we will get in the habit of letting go of the steering wheel until one day, all cars, even here in the French capital, drive themselves. Melissa Bell, CNN, Paris. The National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis hosts the Freedom Awards every year to honor those who help the communities fighting for civil rights. CNN's Kristen Holloway attended the awards, and this is what she found. Mr. Ron and Marilyn Jewell. A red carpet event welcoming the honorees and local stars to the annual Freedom Awards. Every year, the National Civil Rights Museum honors distinguished individuals who have made great global and national impact. It's just amazing to me to join the ranks of so many heroes of mine, like Nelson Mandela and the Dalai Lama and you name it, and I never dreamed I would be a recipient, so it's a thrill being here. Three men applauded for their work and the struggle for civil and human rights. Pitt Hyde is the founder of AutoZone, a local philanthropist. This all started with trying to turn a tragic site into something positive for Memphis and for the country. And of course, it's come so far in all those respects. Reverend Jesse Jackson, an icon of the civil rights movement, says he couldn't be more humbled. All the places I've been, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. President Terry Freeman tells me how she decided the honorees. Reverend Jackson had not been honored, and as an icon, and because the theme was 1968, we thought that that was important. Um, we identified. Uh, Vice President Biden because of some of his human rights work and right, about his work around LGBTQ. Former Vice President Joe Biden took to the podium with a call to action. We need your energy. Once again, we need your leadership. Freedom emphasized how there's still so much to be done. We want to raise awareness of the fact that first off, there are very many similarities, frankly, between 1968 and 2018. And so we want to talk about the similarities there, but we want to just continue to help people understand that the work is not over. And just because we uh, celebrated or commemorated, I should say, um, Dr. King's 50th assassination date, uh, it's not over. The LGBTQ community celebrated coming out day last week, allowing participants to either publicly announce their sexual orientation or to show support for their friends or family. A number of APSU students participated in the event signing up outside the UC during the lunch hour. Organizers say the event is a good way to show those in the LGBTQ community that there is a growing amount of support for them. Coming Out Day was first held in 1988. It has grown to become a national event and is observed on most college campuses around the country. President of Austin Peay State University, Dr. Elisa White, has had a problem with someone stealing her socks. APSU's Karina Galvan went out to discover that the culprit was none other than the first dog of Austin P. Earlier this week, we got to visit President Wine at her historic Archwood home, where we got to meet the first dog, Yahtzee. Well, when you live with a diva, you just have to spend so much time 
making sure that she has plenty of toys and that she has her treats and that she gets her little rubs. And yes, it's, it's quite an undertaking. Hello, I'm Karina, I'm Karina Galvan interviewing Yahtzee, our first dog, and this is a close-up of Clarksville. Is she a Yorkie? She's a Morkie. So her parents were half Maltese and half Yorkie. She's three. She was 11 weeks old when we got her. We got her from Texas and brought her back. He picked her. Yes. He pick, she picked him. Yes. Do you love being the first dog? My brother had a Yorkie named Yahtzee, and then when we got her, I just thought, oh, she just looks like a Yahtzee, and so mm -hmm. I resurrected the name. Does she have any special quirks? Yes. She loves to play with balls more than anything else, and she'll roll them. She likes to hide them under furniture, and so she will look at you and go, boom, and it'll go <laughs> under the furniture, and then she will go to the whatever furniture it is and bark mm -hmm. so that you will get it. At night, she goes and she sneaks around, steals my socks, and carries it anywhere in the house. Do you have any plans for Halloween? For her to dress up? Uh, she's gonna go as a dog. As a dog Halloween? That's a perfect costume, yes. This is Karina Galvan and Dakota Stewart with APSU TV News. Fast food has become a major part of what Americans eat on a regular basis, and a new report from the CDC reveals just how much. CNN's Reed Binion has more in today's Health Minute. Ordering a burger or a bucket of chicken from a fast food restaurant is something we all love to do. Some of us maybe a little too much. According to a new study conducted by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, nearly 85 million U.S. adults consume fast food on a regular basis. One of the authors, Cheryl Fryer, says the role fast food plays in the American diet has not only grown over the years, but has also contributed to health risks like obesity, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. The data also showed that people who ate a lot of junk food varied by age, income level, and sex. Of the adults in the study who consumed fast food on any given day, about 45% were between 20 and 39. Nearly 38% were 40 to 59, and more than 24% were 60 and older. According to the report, higher income families ate more fast food than middle or lower income families. And a slightly higher percentage of men said they regularly ate more fast food than women. For today's Health Minute, I'm Reed Binion. You may have seen some exotic animals at the zoo, but you've probably never seen through them. Some of these creepy animal x-rays cannot be unseen. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's look at this. Guess what? I've seen a see-through toucan and you can too. The Oregon Zoo released some super cool and super creepy animal x-rays just in time for Halloween. The x-rays were taken during routine checkups at the zoo's veterinary center. Featured in the images was a ball python, a Rodriguez flying fox, an inside look at a beaver's tail, and my personal favorite, a chameleon. <laughs> Hoping to dress up your pet chicken for Halloween? There's a CDC warning for that. Bogok? No, really. Due to a recent drug-resistant salmonella outbreak, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is warning those with live poultry against handling, cuddling, and yes, even dressing up their chickens for Halloween. Playing it safe during the holiday will help keep you from running afoul of the harmful bacteria. Something stinks in Portland, Oregon. Police are sniffing around for clues after someone stole a 50-pound nose from a family's porch. It may seem like a laughing matter, but the family says it's not. They've put signs up around the neighborhood in an attempt to figure out who took the unique Halloween decoration. Hey, maybe it was the boogeyman. Above all else, the family just wants to know why their nose was picked. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. So what you guys end up doing during fall break, our whole two days? <laughs> uh, playing the new Black Ops 4 the whole time. It was amazing. Wow. I went to a pumpkin patch. I got like two pumpkins and we got some bombs too for like our house. And I actually saw a sunflower field, so that's kind of exciting. I've never been to one, I've always wanted to go. That's so uh -huh. cute. Where was the pumpkin patch? Um, Boyd's. It was kind of off Madison, kind of near the highway. It was that far out, but it was so fun. It was. So, I recommend everyone go. Go get some pumpkins, they're super cheap. Absolutely. Yeah. Brandon, did you end up going to St. Louis? Uh, not exactly, just a little to the uh, right of it in Belknap, Illinois and Vienna, Illinois went hiking. Mm. And uh, 
girlfriend has some projects to get done and stuff like that. No. Oh, supportive boyfriend. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, did y'all see the first dog? It was so cute. Oh my oh, god. So cute. Yeah. I have yeah. a dog kind of like it. It's a dorky. It's like a Dachshund oh and a Yorkie mix. Ooh, it's dorky. so cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I actually went to a haunted house and oh, it was in Nashville, but it was I mean it was fun. It was a long wait, but it was fun. Can you say <laughs> the name on air? Awesome. Uh, I think it was Devil's Dungeon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that's all the time we have for today. Be sure to join us in the interaction by liking us on Facebook at APSU TV Clarksville and APSU underscore TV on Instagram. Thanks for watching another edition of your Gov's News Weekend Update. And as always, let's, let's go, go pee! pee.